Hello everyone, welcome in Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah Presents Book Look. Let's look at a book having to do with crochet. Um, this one I happen to have found used, which I do like to shop for used books because hey, reduce, reuse, recycle, and re-up that stuff, right? I got this at uh, A Books, no affiliation. I have no affiliation with anything or anybody. So yeah, it's all me my cashy money. All right. Hip to Crochet, 23 Contemporary Projects for Today's Crocheter by Judith Schwartz. Now this one is put out by Interweave Press, as it says there. Yeah, it is used. Somebody else's name up there in the corner, which is just peachy keen fine with me. And let's see how contemporary this book actually is. This one says 2004. Okay, so 2004 is coming up on 20 years ago. We're not going to talk about that acknowledgments and such a great table of contents here and i'm going to be shifting stuff back and forth my apologies i don't have enough scope to see everything a lot of different things in this book um, all of these are the different projects including something called the basics which just tells you about stuff we'll get to that and there's an index and yarn suppliers and all kinds of stuff Nice pictures though. Look at this one. The nested baskets, page 98. Less is more bags, page 56. Look at these striped mittens, page 24. Okay. And also there is an index of techniques and tips. So a lot of these different projects will teach you some other things. So there you go. Perfect pom-poms, perpendicular crochet. I don't even know what that is, but I guess we'll see. Afghan crochet, the Afghan stitch, the basic fringe, buttonholes. So this book seems to have a lot to offer as far as even the beginner to help learn some stuff. Here are the basics. Um, as far back as telling you how to hold the hook, depending on that. I don't hold my hook like that. So, you know, your mileage may vary. But then again, I didn't learn from a book either. I just kind of picked it up. But it tells you how to do chain stitches and some really basic stitches and turning chains and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, here's even more double crochet, slip stitching, working rows. It really does take you through all of the basics here. Tells you how to read a pattern up here. Yeah. Let's see if I can uh, get a little more light on the situation here. I've had to rearrange all of my stuff and still trying to get the light situation figured out. Okay. Yeah, just a lot more basic stuff and talks about working in ends, which I know we all love doing so much. Blocking, back stitching, whip stitching to stitch things together. Yeah. Side seaming. So a lot of basic techniques there. Oh, hats. Looks like we're starting off with something that's pretty darn big basic for most of us here. We can all start with this and learn something. One of a kind hats. And it tells you, there we go, about how to do circumference and it gives everything pretty much in inches, but then it also breaks it down into metric as well. Um, tells you the yarn, the hooks, notions that you might need and gauge if you are into gauge. <laughs> I never make a gauge swatch. I know, shame on me. But it also tells you step by step how to do this for a solid hat. And that looks like a pretty solid stitch hat. There's no fancy loose open stitches there. That to me is looking like half double crochets, which is a nice stitch to do a hat in. Also, here's the bit about telling you how to do perfect pom-poms. It's down on the bottom, and it does cover both pages there. Um, tells you how to deal with stripes if you want to make your hat striped instead of a solid color. Look at that. It also tells you the difference on how to make the ear flap hat. Yeah, I may have to do one of those. But I'm just going to flip through here and we're not going to look at every single thing. I like these mittens though. I might look at this mitten pattern just to learn the basics of how to shape a mitten because I can make fingerless gloves, but I haven't made any, you know, actual mittens. Tells you what the measurement should be, how to work the, the pattern, how to do stripes. Mohair hats. That is kind of cute though. Looks very fancy, right? Little flower motifs. 
All right. Oh, let's uh, two, two, cloche. Notice it's two spelled two different ways there. Two cloche, little, and I kind of like that. This the it says it's a takeoff on the Roaring Twenties hat. I love it. Yeah, that may have to get made. They're making this at a DK weight yard, number three. That's really super cute. I like that. Of course, they're making it out of Rowan yarn, which I don't have any of, but, you know, you can always substitute. Zigzag scarf. And the one thing with that, if you don't know how to do a zigzag um, to do this, you can learn this and then use it to make a blanket if you really want to. Or even a wrap. That's kind of wild. They leave the edges all zigzaggy and stuff. That looks kind of fun. This one is called the Kaleidoscope Scarf. Ooh, this is that really fuzzy, fuzzy yarn that they use. Lace weight mohair. Yeah. Probably not going to work with that, but that sure is pretty to look at. I can look at a lot of stuff and think it's pretty and not have to make it myself. But also a whole section on creating motifs. Very nice tells you how to put the different motifs together color wise for the different ones you're making and you've got a chart as to which ones to put where to make it in the exact way that they did awesome bed retro bed slippers I don't know what makes them retro but that's super cute I wonder if they give an option for somebody with enormous feet hmm huh. probably not I'd have to adjust it but I like that. I like the yarn on that. That's really pretty. They use Koigu Painter's Palette Premium Merino Wool. They used 100% Merino Wool for slippers. Okay. Oh, a chart for a sweet pea pattern. I don't know what that is, but we'll have to look at that. Also, a whole section on how to read charts and what each thing means, especially for this really basic chart. That's pretty awesome. That'll help some of us who've never done it before. Good Vibrations bag. I like that. A little flap on the bag over that. That would be nice to hold your tablet or something. Less is more bags. They say less is more, and yet it looks like they have beads on there. I, I don't understand how beads are less. All right, y'all. Quit with the weird naming stuff if it's not going to be what it is. How to do tapestry crochet, which is covered in those bags. So that's pretty cool. A little more instructional type stuff charts in there for that i like this timeless tank top this is something that will no matter if this is almost 20 years old or not you could definitely use this and make it your own and it's just a nice basic staple piece of course i'd have to adjust the sizes now look at this one okay a skirt now with this skirt they tell you it's you know they show the mini version but they also tell you how to make it longer and make it more loose and flowy if you want it to be. So that is pretty cool. And they're using sport weight yarn for this, which, wow, that's going to be a lot of stitches. Easy cardigan that goes with that. And I, oh, and choosing tells you how to choose buttons here. Choosing buttons. And I imagine there's also going to be a the button hole over in this section someplace. Oh, this tells you how to put that cardigan together like that. And here's the button holes I was talking about. The only button holes I've ever dealt with is in my towel toppers. And uh, I do a tutorial on that with the way I do it for the towel toppers. But yeah, that does make a really cute outfit. And I can see that moving right into today with just colors that you choose that are, that are more, quote, modern. And this is interesting. On the side cardigan, they're calling this one. Looks like it's got motifs in there and it's buttoned off center. Hmm, that's interesting. And they're using DK weight yarn, so all right how to put it together, little charts on how to do that. I like that about this. They have a little everything in here. They're calling this the block on block skirt. I like that. And I know granny squares are considered, you know, old fashioned, but if you do it with a little more modern twist, you really do make it your own. And they have a chart for the motif placement. I would think you can kind of choose your own. I'm just saying. 
but color sequence for the motifs they've got in there too. I like that. They, they give you a lot of information packed into this book. Oh, and look at this with somebody wearing that cute skirt with the boots. I like it. A little section called Lace Crochet where they're telling you about the cellist stitch. Three different cellist stitches. Okay. Bohemian coat sweater. That's the one we saw on that original table of contents up front. That's a lot of fun. And I know folks who would love that. And if I was quick at it, I would make it for them. But I am so slow. Oh, they even do cross stitch flowers on it. And this tells you the placement of them. Sweet. Very sweet. Oh, here are those baskets from the table of contents. Those are kind of nice. What are they using? Oh, they're using sport white yarn. Wow. Y'all, that's a lot of stitches for baskets. Yeah. 1,350 yards of each color. And this is all done in linen. Very cool baskets, though. They make nice decor, but boy, that's a lot of stitches. As you can tell, I am not into that very small, very small stitching. This is about perpendicular crochet. Little section on that, working flat and worked in the round. I am not going to stop and read that now. They're calling this organic baskets. I'm not sure what makes them organic. Is it because they're lumpy? Okay. If, if being lumpy is being organic, then I am organic AF, y'all. Okay, how about that? Freeform crochet. And just lots of interesting stuff in here. Crocheting with novelty yarns. Yeah, that's definitely some novelty stuff down there. Snuggle under throw. That is kind of cool. Very colorful. Light, bulky weight mohair. Oh no. No, look at all that they used in there. Yeah. And look at that. You see that mess right there? That's what would happen if you tried to frog that. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I like the way they give the graph of how to put it together. I would just do it differently and not with mohair because I just cannot see me trying to work with mohair. Now, a lot of this information may have changed. Yarn suppliers. Again, this is nearly 20 years old, but like Barocco, um, some of these I've never heard of. That doesn't mean they're not still around. That just means I haven't heard of them. Westminster Fibers, Rowan Yarns, Koigu Wool Designs. Hmm. Yeah, would have to look around for those. And a great index in this book as well. Breaking everything down. I love a good index. I know that, that that's just the nerd in me. I really like a good index to where you can go and find things because you don't remember what the blast I think was called. You know it was a scarf. Which scarf was it? Well, you can go look and find out. And there is the back. 23 contemporary projects for today's crocheter. All right. Now, originally, this was 1995 US or 2795 Canada. Um, I think I paid four bucks for this, including shipping. So yeah, if you want to check out Abe Books, again, not affiliated, but you can find some really cool, you know, vintage stuff and not so vintage used stuff as well as new books too. Um, but yeah, there are some real vintage stuff in there and I might come up with some more really vintage, vintage books to look through. But thank you for coming by for Book Look. Anything in there you want to make or anything in there you definitely stay away from? <clears throat> Me with mohair? Uh, <laughs> let me know. And if there's any particular book that you have seen out there that you'd like me to find or that you kind of familiar with, but you want to get a look through it before you buy it, let me know. I'll see if I can acquire it and uh, we'll go over it here on Book Look. Thanks for coming by. If you have not subscribed already, I'd appreciate it if you would hit that like button on the way out and leave me a comment as well. Thank you so much and I will see you very soon. Bye, y'all.